Hey friends. So um, the last two or three questions um, from chapter three are a little bit tricky. So I wanted to walk through them with you. Um, if you already figured out how to do them, awesome. You can skip this. But if you're struggling a little bit with numbers 39, 41, 44, or 45, uh, I'm going to go through and just kind of show you how I am solving them. Okay. So let's start with number 39. I think the really ones, the one that we want to hit are 44 and 45, but I'll do 39 and 41 just to kind of warm us up. So starting with 39, um, we've got this little diagram of a boat. Um, there's my boat. Oh, this is a fun episode of Mr. Williams Draws. There's a boat. Um, and the boat is going eight kilometers uh, per hour across the river. So here's, here's my river like this. And then the river is going downstream like this at six kilometers per hour. So both of these are vectors. And part A is asking, what is the resultant speed of the boat? So the first part, it's asking for the resultant speed. So the first part is remembering that resultant means sum. When you add vectors, the vector that you end up with is called the resultant vector. So in this case, um, it's going across the river at eight kilometers per hour. And then it's also being pushed down river at six kilometers per hour. So to find the resultant, I want to find the vector that would go right there. Um, cause that's like the Y component plus the X component, the across the river plus the down river component. I could also redraw this as that I could move my down river up to the top. And now I have tail to tip vector addition. So it'd be eight on one side, six on the other, and they're at a right angle to each other. And I want the hypotenuse. So now this just becomes draw triangle and find the hypotenuse. All right. Um, so I could do my a squared, b squared, c squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, use Pythagorean theorem. Um, and that would be 8 kilometers per hour squared plus 6 kilometers per hour squared equals c squared. All right, 8 squared is 64. I'm going to drop the units for a second. 64 plus 6 squared is 36 equals c squared. 64 plus 36 is 100, and it's kilometers squared per hour squared, because both the units are squared, equals c squared. Then I need to take the square root of both sides to get C by itself. And I find a final answer that C equals 10 kilometers per hour. Now, another way you could do that is if you happen to recognize that this is a 3, 4, 5 right triangle. Um, if you guys have done those kind of right triangles, 3, 4, 5 is a classic one. So 6 and 8 are 2 times 3 and 2 times 4. So the hypotenuse should be 2 times 5, which is 10 kilometers per hour. So if 3, 4, 5 right triangle makes sense to you, um, then you can look at 8 and 6 and be like, ah, that's a 10. I know that one. Perfect. All right. Then part B asks, how fast and in what direction can the boat be rowed to reach a destination directly across the river? OK, so if I want to go directly across the river, um, I need to start here and end up here. Now, the river is going to end up pushing me, as I've seen, this way, right? It's going to end up pushing me down river at six kilometers per hour. So in order to counteract that, I still need to go forward across the river, but I need to go upstream a little bit as well. So I would need to go something like, oops, I'll do black. I would need to go something like this, where I'm counteracting the six kilometers per hour downriver with an element upriver of six kilometers per hour. 
right? So um, in order to do that, I could do, I, know, I could just do my 10 kilometers per hour uh, with a six kilometer per hour upstream component. And that would leave a eight kilometer per hour across component. Or I could really go any speed as long as I counteract the six kilometers per hour downstream. So, um, you know, I could also do one in, let's, I'll do it in like orange this time. So I could also say, well, as long as I go that much, you know, as long as I counteract that six, I could do like that. It would take me longer because I only have like a little bitty tiny upstream or like a cross component now. Um, so I'd be rowing for a while, but if I can't row at 10 kilometers per hour, maybe I can only row at seven kilometers per hour. Well, I could row at seven kilometers per hour as long as I'm mostly going upstream and I just very slowly inch my way across the river. Right. Um, so 10 kilometers per hour with a six kilometer upstream component or really any speed with a six kilometer per hour upstream component. All right, um, let's try the next one. Uh, the next one is number 41. So for number 41, the question is, Harry accidentally falls out of a helicopter that's traveling at 100 meters per second. He plunges into a swimming pool two seconds later. Assuming no air resistance, what was the horizontal distance between Harry and the swimming pool when he fell from the helicopter? OK, so I've got uh, my helicopter here. Another excellent episode of Mr. Williams Draws. There we go. The helicopter's got its little whizzy thing. There we go. Beautiful helicopter. And poor Harry uh, right here falls out of the helicopter. Um, and it's traveling at 100 meters per second. So it's going along here at 100 meters per second. And I know that that's a velocity. And specifically, it's traveling horizontally at 100 meters per second, right? So that's gonna be the velocity horizontal. And then after time of two seconds, there's my swimming pool, Harry falls into the pool. Okay, and I need, what is the horizontal distance? So I need the distance horizontal. Okay, so I need horizontal distance. I have time, I have velocity horizontal. Well, I have an equation for velocity. When I check my physics everything sheet, I notice that uh, velocity, I'm gonna use horizontal, equals distance horizontal over time. Plug in my values, 100 meters per second, equals the distance horizontal over the time. And since both the velocity and the time are horizontal, uh, I can use them together. And oops, I don't actually need to write time because I have a time, it's two seconds. Then in order to find distance, I'll multiply both sides by two seconds. Those will cancel and I'll get distance horizontal equals 200 meters. Hooray! So 200 meters away from the pool. Um, how lucky is Harry that uh, there just happened to be a pool 200 meters away for him to fall into? Hmm, good job, Harry. All right. Uh, let's go back up and um, we'll try number 44. So now things are going to get a little bit trickier because now we're gonna have both horizontal and vertical components. So 44, a boy on a tower in the figure below throws a ball a distance of 60 meters as shown. At what speed in meters per second is the ball thrown? Okay, so I've got my boy, I've got my tower, um, I have the ground, 
I know that the distance horizontally here is 60 meters, and that's the distance horizontal. And then it shows in the image that he is vertically 20 meters, and that's also a distance, but it's a distance vertical. So the first thing to remember, oh, and I need, sorry, what I'm asked to solve for, I know that he throws the ball and it goes out here and lands like that. And I'm asked, what is that horizontal velocity, right? What speed does he throw the ball horizontally? Because okay. I can see that it comes out horizontally. So the first thing, um, is recognizing that I have to treat the horizontal part separate from the vertical part because horizontal does not influence vertical motion and vertical motion does not influence horizontal motion. So I'm going to treat the horizontal piece in one column and then I'm going to treat the vertical piece in another column and then the one part that switches back and forth between them is time because time is not vertical or horizontal. So. I'm going to start by, uh, I just solved number 41, and that one I needed a horizontal velocity, and I used distance and time, and I think I could do that again. I think I could try uh, velocity horizontal equals distance horizontal over time. Um, and then if I start plugging in, uh, velocity horizontal is what I need, so velocity horizontal equals my distance horizontal is 60 meters over uh, the time. I don't quite have the time yet. So now I need the time. And in order to find the time, I could use the vertical distance because I know that any object is gonna fall due to gravity, right? Every object falls with acceleration due to gravity. So um, I've got vertical distance. So now I'm going to go back over and I'm going to do like basically a new needs and givens. Now I, I need time, right? I'm given uh, what am I given? I'm, for vertical stuff, I'm given the distance vertical as 20 meters. And I'm also given, I'm not technically given, but I know that we're on the earth. So I know also the acceleration due to gravity. So I need an equation that relates vertical distance, acceleration due to gravity, and time. So if I flip back in the chapter a little bit, I can find that there was an equation given for falling objects, for the time of falling objects based on the distance. Um, and I have to go, I gotta go way back into chapter two. So I have to go back into chapter two in order to find this one, but there was this nice blue table, there it is, um, with the distance fallen against the elapsed time. Now, technically, I actually can see that 20 meters is one of those standard ones and it's two seconds. So I could just plug in two seconds because 20 meters is two seconds. But I also have an equation that time, uh, versus distance fallen. Distance is one half gt squared. So the equation I'm going to use is that uh, distance equals one half acceleration due to gravity times time squared. Okay. Um, that's also on my physics everything sheet. So um, now I can use that equation and plug in to find my time because I've got the distance. So the distance is going to be 20 meters equals one half. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared times time squared. Then when I multiply one half by 9.8, that's 4.9 meters per second squared. T squared equals 20 meters. Then to get time by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 4.9 meters per second squared. Divide 4.9 meters per second squared. That'll get rid of that side and leave me with t squared equals 20 divided by 4.9. I'll be 
you're right around five, but it's no, it'll be right around four. Sorry. Um, but let me double check and get the precise answer divided by 4.9 is 4.08 uh, seconds squared, because the meters cancel with the meters, leaving me with just the second squared on top. Then I got to go through and take the square root there and the square root there. And that leaves me with t equals the square root of that 2.02. So 2.02 seconds, which is effectively two seconds, but I'll use the precise number. Okay. All right. Now I can take this value for time and I can plug it back in up in here, right? Because that's where my time was. See my time right here there. So that's going to be 2.02 seconds is my velocity horizontal 60 divided by that uh, 29.7. But the numbers that are given are just in two digits. So I can leave with velocity horizontal equals 29.7 meters per second or when I round it to two digits, because 60 is two digits, 20 is two digits, I should leave my answer in two digits, it's equal to 30 meters per second. And that would be how fast the boy throws the ball. Um, so that's 65 miles an hour. Um, that's a pretty good toss, but reasonable, right? You could definitely throw a ball at 60 miles an hour, 65, 70 miles an hour. So that seems like a good answer. Awesome. And he ends up sending it 60 meters. So that's a good long throw. More than half a football field. Seems reasonable. Nice. All right. Um, last one. And it is a similar structure. So this one is going to be number 45. Uh, and I'm going to do it just the same way. So in this case, a shiny new sports car sits in the parking lot of a car dealership. All right, let's draw my shiny new sports car. Choo, choo. Oh yeah, look at how fast that sports car is. So aerodynamic. Um, give it a big spoiler and cool windshield. Yeah, nice. Above is a cargo plane flying horizontally at 50 meters per second. Okay, so here's my, my cargo plane. Look at it all beefy and big with cargo, all that space for putting stuff in it. Cool. Um, at the exact moment, the plane is 125 meters, 125 meters directly above the car, a heavy crate accidentally falls from the cargo doors. Uh-oh. So here's my heavy crate falling from the cargo doors. Uh, relative to the car, where will the crate hit? And the cargo plane is going at, sorry, 50 meters per second. And I'm trying to figure out where is this crate going to hit? Now, I know that the crate is moving horizontally at 50 meters per second. And then I know it's going to start falling. So I know it's not going to hit the car, right? It was right above the car, but it's moving as it goes. And if you drop it, it's going to keep moving and then hit further in front of the car. Um, so I'm basically trying to figure out how far from the car or what's that distance. And that would be a distance horizontal. I also have 50 meters per second is the velocity horizontal. And then 125 meters, that's the distance vertical. OK, so this is going to be just the same. I've got horizontal velocity. I need horizontal distance. So I'm going to try to set it up again with my velocity horizontal is equal to distance horizontal over time. 
once again, I don't have that time. I do have the horizontal velocity that was uh, 50 meters per second equals distance horizontal is what I'm solving for. Distance horizontal over ah, time. Dang it. Okay, so I got to find time now. Remember how I found time before? Uh, I used that vertical distance and acceleration due to gravity. So now I need time again. I learned last time that I could use uh, that the distance vertical equals one half acceleration due to gravity times time squared. I have the vertical distance as 125 meters. So that becomes 125 meters equals one half times the acceleration due to gravity. That's 9.8 meters per second squared times T squared. One half times 9.8 is 4.9. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 4.9 meters per second squared. 4.9 meters per second squared. That'll cancel those. Uh, leaves me with T squared equals 125 divided by 4.9, 25.5 second squared. Uh, now I've got to take a square root and a square root, leaving me with T equals somewhere around five, 5.05. 5. Five point zero five seconds. Cool. So it's going to go down for five point oh five seconds, um, and it's also going to be moving sideways for five point oh five seconds. So as it's moving sideways, um, let's see what we can do. I'm going to take that value, plug her in right there. Five point zero five seconds. Okay. So now, in order to get distance by itself. I have to multiply both sides by 5.05 seconds. 5.05 seconds. Okay, and I'm left with distance horizontal equals 50 times 5.05 seconds, 252.5. Let's make that 253 meters away from the car. My answers were given at, or let's see, my values were given as 50 and 125. So I should probably leave it in two digits, 250 meters instead of 253, because 50 is only two digits. 125 is three digits, but 50 is two. So um, I can, you know, it should be, should be two digits. If you give three, that's fine. Uh, so I'm going to say it is 250 meters away from the car. Hooray! And just like that, we have done our four final problems, uh, the four that I think are the trickiest. So good job with that. All right, um, best of luck with the rest of them.